Yes, I'm calling from the trip. I'd like to confirm. Hey, I've been getting the run around for two hours, and I'm well, coming Can you tell me approximately how much money was missing? Was it over a thousand dollars? Pinchon? Oh, good morning, Mr. Grant. Mrs. Pinchon, do you think it's seemly for your city editor to have to park his car a block and a half from where he works? Well, you'll note I didn't arrive here by helicopter this morning myself. Well, I don't know our parking lot anyway. Well, our lawyers went to renew the option on our property, but it seems it sold to someone else for $3 million. <sighs> I wonder what means my parking space was worth. <laughs> mixed feelings about this downtown boom. On the one hand, I think we've turned the corner on downtown redevelopment. Well, on the other hand, Barney gets surprisingly heavy after a block and a half. Was that someone you know? No, I... I'm not sure. Morning, Donovan. Anything on the overnights? Well, a couple of nickel and dime 211s. Traffic fatal on the Garden Grove. Usual. Yes. Bunk found dead on Skid Row. Strangled. Didn't we have one last week? Maybe. These guys die all the time. Not from strangling. I think I remember another one last week. Check with Driscoll at the cop house. Could be something. Mm. Billy Dash Grant, what do you got? Give me Driscoll, please. <laughs> it figures. Okay, get me some names and bring it in. Mm -hmm. That was Smitty at the airport. Customs just busted about a dozen guys smuggling in 8,000 bucks worth of cameras and jewelry. Okay, thank you. What's so unusual about that? This was a charter group of lawyers and judges. You find anything? Yeah, two bums dead last week and two the week before. Well, that means we have another crazy on our hands. wonder if the competition's picked up on it. Rossi? What are you working on? Uh, something on illegal landfills. It'll keep. I want you to check out Skid Row. There's been another strangling. Five so far, maybe more. Come on, Lou. Can't you give this story to someone else? I'm almost done with the landfill piece, and I'm tracking a welfare fraud story. These are just misdemeanor murders. Misdemeanor murders? Yeah. One bum kills another bum. Cops treat them like misdemeanors. Look, most of these guys have been dead for years. They're just waiting to fall down. Bossy, look at it this way. By going down to Skid Row, you can accomplish two things. You could humor your city editor, who's so old-fashioned, he considers murder a felony. What's the second thing? You get to keep your job. I just left. Take the animal with you. It'll be good cover. What's the matter? Uh, I ran into a bum in the park today. He looked familiar, but I can't place the face. 
It's driving me crazy. You'll never get it by focusing on it and concentrating. What you gotta do is loosen up, think about anything besides this guy. Arthur Woolrich. See? I told you. He was a doctor I knew back in Detroit. Nah, it can't be. Probably somebody who just looked like him. Yeah. Maybe. This is Lou Grant. Get me information in Detroit. Lou, you don't really expect it to be him. If I don't settle this, it'll bug me all day. It's about time we got an interesting assignment for a change. Oh, well, you're sure easy to please. Hey, buddy. Spare a few cents. Yeah. Here you go, partner. Hey, thanks. Thanks a lot. Don't, nice. ma don't mention it. Hey, animal. Animal, what's with you? You think you're helping these guys by giving them handouts? Yes, for What's with you? We're supposed to be talking to these guys. Hey, buddy. Yeah? Could you spare a couple minutes? Well, I'm a little pressed for time, but I'll squeeze you in. I'm Animal. This is Rossi. We're with the Tribune. Smokey. Newspaper man. Figured you guys would be here sooner or later. It's a strangler, right? <laughs> yeah. You know about him, huh? Yeah, are you kidding? Everybody on Nickel Street's talking about it. Nickel Street, that's... Skid Row. Yeah, that creep must have got maybe five guys already. i never seen the mission so crowded. I, I like to sleep outside, you know what I mean? I prefer it that way. But last three nights now, I've been sleeping in the missions. And I'm going to be in there tonight. <laughs> yeah, if they can't save your soul, at least you can save your skin, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The missions are loaded with sinners these days. <laughs> They'll tell you it's the cold weather. Oh, don't let them kid you. We're all talking about the same thing. Hey, you mind if I take your picture? Oh, wait a minute. Go ahead. You from around here? Nah. Coos Bay, Oregon. I used to be a fisherman. Fished all the way up to Alaska. Before this arthritis got me. Well, I made a lot of money in my time. What'd you do with it? I spent it. <laughs> Take it easy, boys. Hey, good luck. Yeah, this is great stuff. Oh, good yeah. color. Yeah, it's wonderful. Talk to a bunch of bums, they don't know anything. We talk to the cops, they don't tell us anything. This is great. Now we gotta go to a mission and talk to some more bums. Are you sure? Right. Without a trace, I checked myself. How about the AMA? Did you try there? Lou, believe me, I checked. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I appreciate it, Sal. So, um, how are things at uh, Free Press? What's the big news in Detroit? It's Wednesday. I know the feeling. Okay, thanks, Sal. Hey, Lou. I haven't talked to you in eight years. Don't you want to know how I'm doing? How my family is? How you doing? How's your name? We're divorced. I'm sorry. How did it happen? Well, if you don't mind, that's a little personal. Okay, Sal. Don't be a stranger. Call me the next time someone's missing. I still say it's dumb to give them your money. They're only going to drink it away. So look at it as a payoff. For two bits, you get an interview. That's more than the story's worth. How'd it go? Surprise. Everybody's worried about the Skid Row Strangler. That's what the cops are calling him. Join us for a beer. Beer? Four more, please. I thought you'd never ask. No, thanks. Oh, come on. Well, Rosie, you finally clawed your way to the bottom. How does it feel to wind up on Skid Row? Listen, I never asked for this story. I tried to get out of it, and I resent having to do it. You got any questions about how I feel? Drink up, Ross. Make you feel better. I told you I don't want any. Hey. Must have been something you said. Lou Grant will continue in a moment here on A and E. Lou. Lou. About last night. Forget it. I want to forget it. Because as long as I'm on the Skid Row story, I'm not going to be myself. What are you talking about? We've worked together long enough now for you to know I take tough assignments and straight. I'm not one of your complainers. I think you better slide the Skid Row story over to someone else. 
thought this thing had never arrived. Oh, don't worry. If you miss one elevator, there's another one along in a half hour. Maybe we should take them out and install a knotted rope. <laughs> you did good work on that strangler piece, Rossi, first rate. You know, a lot of times we ignore stories in our own backyard. I'm going to look forward to reading the follow-up on it. Uh, thanks, Charlie. We were just discussing it. Last night, when I got home, I stood in the shower. It must have been half an hour. Felt like I couldn't get clean, no matter how hard I rubbed. Those guys give me the creeps. They managed to keep that out of the story. What's really bugging you? I don't have too much sympathy for alcoholics. Well, maybe this will change all that. You'll meet the men, get to know some of them? I don't need to meet them. My father was an alcoholic. I lived with it for 15 years. What are you talking about? That was made it sound like your dad was a great guy. He was a great guy. Till he began boozing. So I finally got him. Stick with it a little longer. If it really starts to eat you up, I'll move you off. Okay, Lou, I'll try. But it's not a very easy assignment for me. That's why they call it work. Anything interesting? Got a Skid Row file. Here's one from 1948. It says Skid Row is on the verge of being eliminated. Hmm, it's nice to see we were right on top of it. <laughs> Here's another one. 1952. Skid Row will soon be a thing of the past. Uh, 1964. The mayor's office was proud to announce that they've turned the corner on the elimination of Skid Row. <laughs> Just can't keep a good Skid Row down. Wow. Well, 48, 52, 64. Weren't those election years? Just a coincidence, I'm sure. Yeah. Oh, now that's what I love to see. What? Nothing. The opposition didn't have a thing on the Skid Row Strangler. No one did. Beat them all cold. Now let's try to stay on top of this one. Don't worry. Unfortunately, we'll probably have this story for some time. Mm. Billy wanted to see if there were any women on Skid Row. That's a good idea. Yeah, I thought so, too. She's also going after the cops for a psychological profile of the killer. Oh, I don't envy the cops. These nut murders are sometimes hard to crack. Sure. It's hard to tie a suspect to crimes when he's picking his victims at random. You know, not too many years ago, Skid Row was just a block or so from the financial district. And that area, which had been full of gray suits during the day, was really taken over by the bums at night. So, you know what they did? Moved the bums out. Yeah. Moved the financial district. It was easier. Once a week, the men could pick up new clothes. No charge for anything. It was all donated. They can get a shower, shave, clean up a little. Hi there. As you can see, we get a lot of military stuff from nearly any war you can name. I think we got a bigger wardrobe department than Warner Brothers. How many meals do you serve? A day? About 1,400. And what do you charge? Nothing. But most missions make you sit through an ear pounding first. Sermon? You sit through an hour or two of fire and brimstone and you get your beans. Well, that's fine, I suppose, but I've been here nine years and you don't often see a sinner saved. A man doesn't leave Nickel Street till he's ready to leave. That's just my feeling, of course. You sound like a cynic. Maybe, but I know a little about it. I guess so after working here nine years. That's not why. I used to be one of them. Here's a psychological profile from a shrink who worked with the cops before. The killer is an urban hermit, kind of a loner, someone who can't cope, possibly someone with unresolved hostilities toward alcoholics. Killing is a way of achieving power he can't otherwise get. There are probably 100,000 people in the area who fit that description. Yeah, but only one of them is a murderer. What about the women's angle? I figure I head down there now. It's lunchtime. You want company? Sure. This is also close to the office. <laughs> That's right. I parked my car farther away. Well, there it is. I found this place in the yellow pages, but there wasn't any answer. It's locked. Uh, uh, can I help you? 
But we wanted to talk to someone here. We're from the Tribune. Well, maybe you can talk to me. Well, I'm the minister. I run this mission right down the street here. And anything that I can help you with, fine. You know, the women's uh, service there, they don't get enough funds to operate full time now. It's really a shame because we see more women now than we ever have. Do they come to the mission? No. But all we can do is feed them. We have our hands full just taking care of the men. Well, what happens to the women? Well, some of them turn to prostitution just to support their habits, booze, drugs. Some of them turn to prostitution just to get by. We refer it to the county, but sooner or later they're all back out on the street again. How many are there? Women? Oh, 150 to 200. It keeps changing. And men, I'd say 4,000 would be a good guess. I, I know this may be a long shot, Reverend, but I thought I saw someone I used to know. <laughs> Is there any chance that you might know him? Arthur Woolrich? Arthur Woolrich. Huh? Not by name. But then again, down here, names don't mean much. Right here. Excuse me, fellas? Yeah. He was, uh, he was a doctor. Well over six feet, gray-haired. The man I saw was wearing a suit coat. Hmm. There's a fellow who calls himself Doc. Huh? Well, he's been here two, maybe three years. He could be a doctor. You know, he, he has so many stories down here, you just you don't know what to believe. You know where he stays? No, no, I just see him in here when he's desperate. <laughs> yeah, he doesn't want to sit through a whole service just for a meal. And Doc moves around a lot, you know, like most of the men. But I'll, I'll watch for him. Okay. Let me ask you a question. Sure. What do you want him for? I want to see him. We've known each other for many years. Did you ever consider that if he's living here, your friend may not want to be found? This is my office number and my residence number. It's important. Okay, I'll, I'll let you know. Oh, you know, if you want to do a story about women, miss, uh, you might try Jody's Grill down the street. Yeah, ask for Dirty Donna. She's an old gal, in her 60s probably. Been here most of her life. You'll recognize her right away. Has an old beat-up hat with a feather. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Reverend. Uh-huh. Lou Grant will continue in a moment here on a and &E. Are you done? No, I'm dirty, Donna. Hi, I'm Billy Newman. You're in my way. Oh, sorry. Uh, could I talk to you for a minute? Talk all you like. I ain't buying. Oh, I'm not selling anything. Everybody's selling something. No, I, uh, I just wanted to ask you some questions about living here, what it's like. Why, are you planning on moving in? You find your own. No, I... Move, you're still in my way. Sorry, uh, where would be a good place to stand? Try Long Beach. Oh, Mr. Grant. Yes? You found him, Robert. Yeah, he, uh... Where is he? Well, he's upstairs in the dormitory. He must have come in after the service. And... Thanks for calling. Yeah.
Arthur. Hey, Doc. Don't shout, Lou. I'm drunk, not deaf. So it was you. Yeah, I heard you were looking for me. Well, now that you satisfied your curiosity, go on home. We go back a lot of miles, Doc. You want to talk? No. But I can see you do. Yeah. Yeah, I do. All right, then. Let's talk. Seen any good movies lately? Come on, Doc. How could this have happened? You look me up, Lou. I don't have to explain anything to you. Okay, okay. Did something happen to your wife, the kids? Uh, are they st still in Detroit? All good questions. I have no idea. Don't you care? Care? You think I'd be sleeping here if I cared? Care goes with brushing your teeth, combing your hair. I still can't believe this is the same guy I used to know. You didn't know me. We play cards, have a few drinks, and everybody would go home, and I'd have a few more drinks. Why? Pressure. Couldn't take the pressure. Everybody has pressure. They don't just quit. A lot of people quit. A lot of people quit, like I did. You were a surgeon. Think of the loss. Uh, great loss. It got so at the end of every operation, I'd rush off and throw up. I'd get the shakes, so I'd drink. I'd drink, so I'd get the shakes. Other doctors covered for me. You know how it is. Even my nurses, they covered for me. The truth of the matter is, I'd become downright incompetent. But the funny thing is, I was the only one that finally admitted. But, but couldn't you get help? You obviously don't know a damn thing about doctors. We don't need help, we give it. Why, I could enter a room and save a man's life with the laying on of hands. But who do we turn to for help? How about me? Thank you, Lou, but I don't need your help. Down here, I've got it made. I've simplified my life considerably. All I have to worry about Where's the next drink coming from? How much future in that? All the future I need. Can you use this? I tell you what, I'll take it if you'll take my advice. Shoot. Don't throw your money away on bombs. We're not worth it. Go on home, Lou. I've got a lot to do in the morning. I'm going to turn in. Lou Grant will continue in a moment here on a and &E. I think you're going to want the police report up here. Not really, but I feel you want it up there. City desk, Donovan. Yeah, just a second, he's right here. For you, somebody named Carmine. Okay, tell him, uh, tell him. Tell him what? Uh, I'll take it. You can take it right here. No, no, I'll, I'll take it at my desk. I got it. Hello? Yeah, yeah. Okay, look, I'm really, okay, okay. I'll be there, Pop.
Hey, Joe. Joe, how you doing? Okay, what's the big emergency? You okay? Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but you see the, uh, the TV? It went out again. You called me here for that? Oh, no, no, no. You see, the repairman, he made me uh, write him out a check to cover it. He had to replace a whole bunch of tubes. Uh, I don't even know if he did what he said he did, but he charged me 120 bucks. <laughs> see, my check doesn't come in for another week, so I have to put that much money in the bank before the end of the day. Pop, you could have told me that over the phone. I didn't have to come here to get you that money. Hey, you know your story about those uh, welfare cheaters? That was really good. I wanted to save it, but uh, I guess it got thrown out. You want me to make this out to you or to cash? Uh, to me. You know, you ought to tell those editors of yours to put your whole story on page one. There's a lot of people, you know, uh, they get in trouble trying to follow it when it's all spread out like that in little pieces. Yeah, I'll tell them. Hey, Joe. Have you been uh, keeping track? It's three months today. Good. Don't I even get a little uh, nice job, Pop? Keep it up. Three months without a drink is not exactly a world's record. <laughs> hey, you're tough. I raised a tough kid. <laughs> nice job, Pop. Keep it up. Hey, uh, you want to stay for lunch? I'm making uh, some soup. I can't. I'm uh, on a story. I got to get back to work. Uh, listen, uh, thanks uh, for the money. I'll pay you back uh, by the end of the month. Forget the money. No, no, I mean it. I'll pay you back. Hey, uh, I got a job. I'm working. Saturdays, uh, I'm helping out at the uh, Heads Up. The what? Oh, yeah. Used to be uh, Petrello's Barbershop. <laughs> They're not barbers anymore. They're... Uh, Hair stylist. They don't cut your hair. They uh, they shape it, and they charge you twenty bucks. <laughs> it's nice. Yeah. Uh, Joe. Three months. Yeah. So long. What's going on? How long are we supposed to stay here? As long as it takes. You got company. Hello, Lou. Doc. I figured I'd find you here someday. Always knew you'd come to no good. <laughs> hey, innkeeper. Uh, Doc Rossi. Rossi, this is Doc. You know this guy? He used to. What's in the bag? Oh, not much, really. It takes about two of these to make the mission benches a little softer. It's a present, isn't it? It's a present for me. Uh, not a present, exactly. Just an old top coat from Minneapolis I never wear, and I figured it might come in handy. I just hate to see it go to waste. Hey. It's nice. Thanks, Lou. Glad you like it. So, is, um, this like your regular place? <laughs> it's not much, is it? <laughs> Well, wait till you see some of the other places. Mm -hmm. Make this joint look like the Playboy Club. <laughs> <laughs> There's Maxie. It's all right, Maxie. Maxie's taking his lame act up to the music center. Mm -hmm. Some nights he makes $20 or more. Really? See the guy over in the corner there? He used to be a top flight computer salesman. Been all around the world. Must be tough to sell computers here. <laughs> oh, yes. The market's really depressed. <laughs> Hey, innkeeper. Here's to the great equalizer. 
Alcoholism? We're not alcoholics. We're drunks. Sorry, I forgot where I was. We're not derelicts. You're not. No, sir, we're not. We're not indigents. We're not transients. We're bums. You sound like you're proud of it. Not proud. Candid. Baloo, what are you doing out here? Oh, I'm, uh... <clears throat> We're still a newspaper, man. Thought by now you'd have an honest job. About a chance. Rossi works with me. He's doing a story on the Strangler. You think they'll catch him? You think it matters? Well, I gotta be running along. I got one of those missions before they close the door. See you, Lou. Won't need that. Doc, why don't you get a room for the night? I can nah, help you. No, I won't hear of it, Lou. You've done enough already. Uh, don't worry. I'll sleep indoors tonight, even if I have to take an hour's worth of your pocket. Thank you for the coat. Hey, there's something in the pocket. Ah. Uh, Thanksgiving Day game. Lions versus the Packers. Gee. Must be the last time I wore that coat. I never miss one of those games, even when I had to drive from Minneapolis. Lions versus the Packers. I was there. Great game. They were all great games. Really brings back the memories, huh? I had better seats than these. Continue in a moment here on a and &E. You know, no matter how many times I take a carnival cruise, I... a and &E returns to Lou Grant. Hello? Morning, Charlie. Is that the five-star? No, just the home edition. I think you ought to see this. Strangler got another one. I hope it wasn't your friend. No. No, but they found the body just a block away from where I left, Doc. You know, Charlie, whenever I used to read a story like this, I gotta confess it, it didn't have any real impact. I guess I figured it's a waste of life anyway. What difference did it make? I know what you mean. They don't care for themselves, why should we? I guess that's it. Hi, how are you? I guess now that I know one of them, I feel a little different. Don't get to know too many of them. the street for breakfast. I'll pop for it. If I, uh, if I help you with your story, do you get out of my life? What do you got? Well, the place you want to go to across the street, a real ripoff. Mission down here got a thousand frozen TV dinners once. So he gives them to his pal across the street. Scrapes it out of the tin. Mashed potatoes in one pot and the chicken in the other. And sells it right off the menu. There. Isn't 
out a better story than me. A rip-off artist. It is, if you can substantiate it. You're the reporter. Then there's the guy that drives up and tells you he's a labor contractor. He'll give you 20 bucks a day for delivering throwaway newspapers. So, you wind up humping all day in some neighborhood in Granada Hills. When it's time for him to pick you up, he's not there. So he gets a free day's work out of you. You're not as slow as you look. Hey, Doc, what happened to the coat Lou gave you? I sold it. You got six bucks. How the hell could you do that? That coat was from a friend. Bums don't want friends. <coughs> Besides, I couldn't afford to carry around the extra weight. You know, everybody tells me I'm supposed to have compassion for you guys. But I don't know why. You have the same shot we all have. You just turn belly up. You get no argument from me, kid. You had a family, man. Did I? We weren't so close during the last years. I come home a little juiced, and suddenly everybody had something to do. I suppose you blame what you are on your family. I don't blame anybody. I made my choice. But there was a time when it would have mattered to me. If somebody cared. <coughs> Hi, Donna. How'd you like the gloves? You don't give up, do you? That's what they pay me for. I'm a reporter. Who isn't? Seems like you can't walk around here anymore without tripping over one of them TV jerks. You with TV? No, I'm with the Tribune. Well, most of the folks around here prefer the Times. It's fatter, makes a better blanket. Yeah, that's enough of that. Okay, darling, I'm all yours. Come on, sit down. Yeah, I'll fix that for you. Wait a minute, I'll get your paper. Okay. Oh. Thanks. There, keep you clean. Thank you. Does it bother you living here alone with the strangler around? Not much I can do about him. Why should I worry about it? Cops don't worry about it. Why should I worry about it? How many they got on that case? About seven. Let's see. <laughs> Shoot. This whole Skid Row area is only 12 blocks square, and they can't find that screwball. You can bet if some murders had happened in Beverly Hills, they'd have had a cop behind every blade of grass. How long have you lived in Skid Row? 33 years next month. That's longer than most people live in a house. You live in a house? Uh, I live in an apartment, but I used to live in a house. Yeah, me too. Married and everything, and I had a job. Oh, I had a good job with a phone company in Albany. That's upstate New York. I was the highest ranked woman in the shop. What happened? I had this operation. I couldn't work anymore. What was wrong? Nothing. They said it was my appendix, but that was just an excuse so they could plant this little box in my head. It's about the size of one of them small batteries. Why would they want to do that? Would a spy on me. Why else? They thought I'd tell them important things about how the phone system works well. I'm smarter than that. Aluminum foil. Keeps out the rays. Messes up the transmission. I still get those headaches. But most of the time, I don't hear those voices anymore asking me them questions. It's pretty sharp, huh? Slick. Very slick. You want to come with me? I'm making my rounds now. I know the best dumpsters in town. Why, you'd be amazed at the stuff you can find. Hey. 
I'm going to tell you something. And nobody's supposed to know. Dirty Donna ain't my real name. doing here? I'm sleeping till you barged in. What time is it anyway? It must be the middle of the night. It's nearly eight. Did you interview the guys on Skid Row or join them? Oh. Oh. <laughs> Rossi, when'd you turn this in? A couple hours ago. Right. You handled it well. Oh, thanks. Well, Doc was my research assistant. He helped me a lot. I'm glad you're stuck with it. Yeah. Why don't you go home and get some sleep? Okay, I will. Just something I gotta do first. Gotta go talk to my dad. Your dad's alive? I know. He's just not someone I've been real proud of. But something's changed. Yeah. Is he sick? Kind of. But that's not what's changed. Joe, what are you doing here? I just got the day off. I thought I'd stop by. Something wrong? No, nothing's wrong. Can I come in? Sure, sure. Come in, come in. Look, Pop, I need your advice. I'm having a little trouble with my car. You were always good with motors. Maybe you could just take a look at it and tell me if it's worth hanging on to. Sure, sure. Yeah. You could drive me around. We could take a spin. <laughs> Let me listen to it. Do I smell lasagna? Oh, geez, I forgot the lasagna in the oven. Yeah. Well, you're the last person I expected to see here today. Yeah, I can see that. Oh, that's, uh, that's just for cooking. Okay, so I had a glass of wine. I can handle it. Sure. Half a glass of wine. How's that gonna hurt me? You know, sometimes I can't believe that you're Italian. Yeah, I don't believe you. You know, half a glass today is a glass tomorrow, two glasses the next. Day. That's what you come here for, huh? To bother me. Come on, it's time for you to leave. Isn't this where you usually take the wine and pour it down a sink, and then you leave, huh? Come on. I'm not gonna throw any wine down a sink. But you're gonna leave? No. Pop said another place. Okay. City desk, Donovan. Yeah, just second, he's right here. For you. Lou Grant. Oh, hi, Reverend. What can I do for you? I see. Yes, I... I understand. Thank you, I appreciate your calling. That was the mission. Doc's dead. What happened? Exposure. Pneumonia near as they can tell it. What a waste. Hey, Lou. Did I hear there's another strangle victim? That's number seven. Oh, uh, no. It's natural causes. Oh, doesn't count. Still only six. A 
that's right. It doesn't count. This is Mike Wallace. They kill for the thrill. Predators of innocent people, serial killers, monsters in our midst on the next 20th century. Tonight, only on A&E. Now, a rookie cop may be out of his league when he takes on the leader of a big-time drug operation. On Police Story, next on A&E.